Shaving Armor Podcast, episode 81. I'll take mine to go. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and full of sticker burrs, Michael Corley. And with me tonight is... Uh, whoop, not Lee, because Lee is unable to join us tonight. With me tonight is James. James, tell us who you will be playing. Hi, I'm I'm James. I'm playing Penton Chalice, who is a spell scale sorcerer. Yes, That's me. Master, master of lightning. And, yeah. And, Has anyone he's... called him Penton Phallus before? Because I just did. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I'm a teenager. <laughs> yeah, we we missed we missed that opportunity on episode sixty nine. Anyway, ah! also coming in and making inappropriate jokes, uh, which makes her father proud, is Izzy. Izzy, tell everyone who you will be playing. I will be playing Marezi McGraw tonight, half orc barbarian, half orc, all, half human, all cop. Perfect. And also with us tonight, master of dice, Ma- uh, ha- owning more dice than any human can possibly imagine. We have Dare. Dare, let's tell who, tell us who you will be playing. I will be playing Tix Birchmanson, your lovable, diminutive cleric. And as a special bonus content, assuming that I remember to do it, I'm going to add a special song that our resident bard, Fugly, has uh, added just for uh, Dare, and it's about having too many dice. Uh-oh. Uh, so we'll add he that. He made another one? Oh, hell oh, yeah. Uh, he made another another one. I'll get to that later. Oh, my. Uh, but, That's but also. Sick. Uh, last but absolutely not least, we have Riley. Riley, tell us who you will be playing. Hi, I'm playing Athora Greyfield, a fighter tiefling. Wonderful, wonderful. When we last left, uh, Athora had been on an epic quest to find the Craxador bandits who had attacked and slaughtered her village. Her goal to find them and bring them to justice. She had tracked them down with her companions, Glingalore, the elven male uh, wizard, and Norfear, the thief Furbolg, and they had come to the Simeon crevasse where they had tracked them down. But in an epic battle, uh, Norfear had used a magic portal that looked a lot like uh, the sort of hole that Bugs Bunny might use, uh, <laughs> and had used it to help uh, Athora escape, where he she had actually ended up crawling out of the bag of holding that was underneath uh, Audrey Three hashtag Hutnuts. <laughs> and uh, that had put all of these people in contact with one another, and the group uh, had agreed to help her. Had gone to the Simeon crevasse, had encountered a ancient. A uh, wizard who wanted them to sleep Too by bad. the name of Casper, uh, who uh, y'all managed to fight off the um, terrible mattresses and other things that he had set upon you. You had scouted your way down to find a horrifying uh, poop and rotten food uh, uh, dungeon type area where an, um, a, a poop monster, there's no other way to put it, who is mutated and looks uh, semi human is there with a dark uh, paladin-type fellow, a a gaunt, almost vampire-looking guy, and they were about to cook Norfear when the two of you... uh, I'm sorry, when you had actually started a rescue and had successfully attacked them, and we were actually in the middle of that combat. And now, back to the story, and because, of course, I've long since lost that, I would like everybody to roll for new initiative. Oh. Sure. Okay. Plankity, plankity. Oh, that, 10. That one went to the floor. And I have no idea where it is. <laughs> Too bad you the don't have any other dice. The if dice ro- fall on the floor is you look and see what number it is, and if it's a bad number, you get to re-roll it. <laughs> <laughs> if it falls on the floor, you re-roll it. If All it's right. cocked, you re-roll it. Everything else must stay. Alright. Here we go. In the box. That is 14. So... Um, that's a nice... I always forget it. I 3D printed a dice tower. I never use it. It's very loud. That's a 21 But in the good way. A 21, is that dare? Yep. For ticks, okay. I got a 14. 
And a 14 for Riley. For a Thora. And I, I may have missed it. Uh, uh, James, what did uh, Pinson get? That'd be a 10. A uh, 10. Uh, so uh, Izzy, uh, so uh, dex bonuses for... Um, Mine's a 2. A 2. And for, uh, and for Pinson? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What dex bonus? Your, your dex bonus is plus two. Uh, well, in that case, just to, we'll have Izzy go first, just because I wrote it down first. Okay, um, that's huh? fine. That's fine. And that actually brings it first to ticks. Uh, both of these uh, creatures have been damaged. The horrifying poop monster is behind like a huge butcher block, uh, and behind him is just row upon row of these uh, just sodden blue boxes that have been boxed up and filled with uh, just horrible concoctions of his own thing. There's a giant cauldron behind him bubbling where just this horrifying smell. If you imagine burning feces and rotten meat, that's what it smells like. Oh, I wish uh, I... Smells like grandma's. <laughs> and he's wearing a, uh, a dark blue apron. And uh, he's also... Uh, does it say kiss the cook? Uh, let's say that it does <laughs> in common. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Norfear, the thief, is uh, was in the process of being rescued by uh, o- Osokai. Uh, so just to kind of give you a stage, and they were facing off with this uh, like dark uh, black armor type guy with a with a double long sword. Um, is the other figure in the room? Uh, what would you like to do, Tix? I am going to cast. Uh, blindness on our little. Oh, uh, I, I, let me let me go back. Uh, you have already successfully cast a blindness on uh, the Otag or the poop monster. Right. So just FYI. Okay. And um, so this round, I'll I'll cast blindness on our little monster making friend. All right. So that is. That is a nice 19 to cast that, and so he is blinded. Uh, he uh, gets to what... make a constitution saving throw. Constitution um, saving throw. He rolls a natural one. Uh, so you he see the cataract uh, film over. His, yes, he, he's very, very blind, and he, he is he is uh, leveling out his uh, longsword to strike at Osokai. And just as it comes down and you see his swing just whoop, go wide as he, as he screams uh, in, in panic as the world goes dark around him. Uh, very useful spell. Very useful. Uh, and that will actually bring it to Athora. I'll go ahead and attack. Okay. Is that a question? No, that's a statement. Okay. <laughs> and I'll use... You hear that a lot at home, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I hear that from him a lot. <laughs> I'll use my two-handed sword and attack. That's a natural one. Oh. Ooh, ouch. Uh, were you just uh, for flavor? Were you attacking the uh, paladin or the poop monster? The paladin. Okay. Uh, I need you to roll a hundred, a percentage dice, so uh, okay. two ten-sided dice, okay. and let me know uh, what that is. That's a 20. That's a 20? Absolutely nothing happens. You just miss. Uh, probably because he is over-correcting uh, from his swing as he goes blind, he actually stumbles forward, and that throws you off of where you thought he was going to be. Uh, but that will bring it to our resident half-orc. Uh, Izzy, uh, what would you like to do? I would like to attempt to brutally murder the poop monster. I don't right. like poop monsters. You have a really bad relationship with them. That is a 22. Okay. I miss. Uh, you miss with a 22? Uh-huh. Uh, no, you definitely hit uh, the poop monster, the blinded poop monster with a 22. For 11 points of owie damage. 11 points of owie damage as you slice into him and you can, like, even his blood smells bad as it splatters out. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, uh, terrible. And, of course, uh, being a uh, high-level... Uh, or a uh, barbarian, you have two attacks. I do. I'd like to try and really just kill this poop man. Nat twenty, very sexy of me. Nice. Wow, so nice. Damage. That's ten points of damage. 
10 points. So that's 21 points of damage you've done in a single round. And actually, I have to go back because I believe uh, Althora, as a fighter, you actually have two attacks, and we forgot to give it to you half of the last adventure. Uh, so uh, you actually get another attack. <laughs> Picking a different 20-sided die. Hmm. Yes. And that's... Of the 50,000 your family owns? <laughs> Half of them are mine, so... Hmm. That's 16. 16? Uh, 16 uh, total? Yes. Unfortunately, that will not hit, because he is wearing full plate armor. Okay. Mm. But uh, but it, it clangs off his armor. Uh, otherwise, you would have you would have pierced him right through. Uh, so that will actually bring us to Penton. Well, seeing as um, seeing as, as he's done a decent amount of damage to the boop monster, um, I will add to it and I will throw uh, a set of magic missiles at it. Hey, you right. said poop. That's not a nice word. You should apologize right now. Sorry, poop to- monster. He was referring to the deck. Right, the poop deck, right. Okay, boom. Uh, that would be 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage to uh, the poop monster. So in a single round, y'all have already done 34 points of damage to him. And you had already damaged him before when you were able to line up that lightning bolt shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, earlier. Uh, so he is uh, he is doing very poorly. He is also a very powerful uh, horrifying monster, so he's still alive, but uh, th- those magic missiles just sizzle right into him, and it smells like you're just, you know, burning old garbage. Uh, and it is not great. Maybe orcs like old garbage smell. You don't know. No, that's true. That's true. Uh, and now uh, we come to the uh, blinded uh, paladin. I love that bar. A dire rat, so like the size of a chihuahua, scrambles up on his armor, much in the way a certain lizard uh, did with you, Izzy. And uh, and its eyes glow slightly red, and he smiles, mm. almost as if he can see. And he is attacking you, Althora, because you are in front of him with his uh, long, two-handed uh, longsword. Oh, great. And he rolls a natural 20. Oh! Yay! That is, oh, not, no. that is not good. Is that any way to treat a guest? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so that is in a single blow. He does. Ow. Oh, yeah. He does 25 points of damage Oof. to Althora. Uh, so just cuts into your side. You were not. You were expecting to fight a blinded opponent, and he suddenly just regains uh, his composure and slices into you. You you all actually realize this guy is actually really dangerous. Like, he is not just some guy. He is uh, the servant of this poop monster who is the servant of a god. And he is really, really dangerous. And you were right to blind him uh, to try to take him out, but he has in some way uh, t- ameliorated some of that, and he is sliced right into you. Out of curiosity, Althora, how many hit points do you have total? Six, 67. 67, okay. So you're, hmm. I mean, you're a really tough fighter, uh, and you're uh, pretty pretty badass, but uh, that really, really hurt. Ow. Um, yes. Uh, he does uh, have a second attack. Of course. Uh, will a 16 hit? Uh, no. Ah. Uh, so you are able to block that second attack uh, as you uh, as cringe away from, from that first slash. Uh, and that will bring it to everyone's favorite, the poop monster. Poop monster. Um, and uh, he, is, uh, uh, he has arms uh, that you would understand as arms. Uh, his head is a mass of eyeballs with a, not unlike the Zorn you had encountered before, with a mouth that opens on the top of his head. Out of that mouth on the top of his head, he just goes, and a uh, very noxious uh, plume comes Mm. out from that. Mm. And I would like everyone uh, to make a fortitude saving throw. I'm just going to make a tutitude one. (laughs) Eleven. I'm dead. Uh, 19 for Penton. 19 for Penton. 18 for Tix. 14. 18 for Tix. 14? Yeah. Okay. Marezzi, uh, you are nauseated. That makes sense. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? 
Yep. So while you are nauseated, uh, you can only make a single um, move action per turn. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, and you cannot attack, uh, cast spells, or concentrate uh, until that is resolved. Uh, so uh, you also throw up. Blah! That ma- that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. To yes. The, uh, to the. Uh, uh, and uh, it is it is mighty stinky in here. Uh, so uh, at, in this combat, the Norfear, the thief, he's in horrible shape. Remember, he was just completely trussed up. He had a uh, a nasty rag shoved it into his mouth uh, that looked like it had been used to clean a toilet first. Um, yeah. And he is trying to help out. He throws out uh, something to help, but it turns out that it's uh, actually the remnants of that magic circle. And uh, he completely misses. He's trying to throw it to get the paladin to fall into it. Instead, like a Looney Tune cartoon, <laughs> uh, Osokai uh, accidentally steps in it, turns and looks at all of you as if to go, really? Really? And then, boom, goes right down into it. And he is gone. The 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 hole closes up after him. You have no idea where he is. Uh, Oops. And the, Oops, wow. that's that's annoying, and that's that's what uh, uh, old Norfear does. Tix rolls and, his uh, eyes. He looks so that at... you don't have to pretend to uh, c- to uh, control him. Maybe he uh, Norfear looks at you, Althora, and says, "Sorry." And exactly that will bring us back to Tix. So Tix is going to. Go up to our paladin friend and expend his last level three spell and do... Oh, no. Uh, He's going to use uh, level two, inflict moderate wounds on the paladin. And that is a beautiful 20. Oh, wow. Natural 20. Shrexy. So that is... Let's hope for maximum damage. Uh, That is... Uh, 20 points doubled, so that would be 40 points of damage, on an, of necrotic damage on inflict, natru- inflict moderate wounds. What? Where would you say that you touch him? Well, running up to <laughs> Show him. Show me on the doll. Show me. Uh, he's going to dive uh, under a Thora and grab uh, the paladin's knees and just squeeze right there like a like a good fatherly squeeze on the knees <laughs> and disintegrate them. Uh, yep. Uh, just just coming in for a hug. And, and as he as he hugs, both of your hands just touch the back of the knees. And uh, you all hear this, this, this surge of energy and just this crackling sound as uh, one of his, his knees completely disintegrates. And his, his leg just... Boom, to, it clanks to the floor because it's covered in armor and he screams he's now on he literally has one leg and he is uh horribly injured that 40 points of damage would you know obviously have many times over killed a normal human uh and he just screams in pain uh and the rat is like barely staying on his shoulder and that will bring it to you althora oh goody <laughs> althora um i'm can i try and the... i'm gonna attack i guess Okay. Uh, still going after the paladin? Yeah. Okay. Uh, using the two-handed sword, that's a 22. That will hit. Yay. Great. Uh, let's see. That'll be 16 points of damage. Bam. All right. Okay. Then I'll go for the second attack. Now. Please. Natural 20. Natural Ooh. 20. All right. Uh, let's uh, hear that damage. And how right. do you kill this paladin? <laughs> <laughs> 12 points of damage. Uh, total after the doubling? Uh, no, actually. Sorry. Ah. Uh, my house rule, uh, technically you're only supposed to double the damage from the weapon itself and not your damage bonus, but my house rule is you double everything for a natural 20. Okay. You don't have to re-roll, Riley. You just double it. Oh. Okay, sorry. Uh, 20, 24 then would be the damage. 24. So remember, this guy had already been struck by lightning. Uh, so between you and Tix, uh, you have done 80 points of damage. So Athora, 
Describe to me <laughs> how you kill this dark paladin, <laughs> as Penton Yay. predicted. So after I was hit, and after Tix has now dealt all that damage, I take my two-handed sword and completely slice him in half and watch as he falls in two pieces. Oh, that's lovely. Yes, uh, there, there is a moment where he, he pauses and... Uh, the, the, the strength that you bring down, you actually cut right through both the front and the back of his uh, full plate armor. And the, the strength of that is, Merezi is like, you're going like, dang, uh, that is impressive. Uh, and it, it goes straight through. And there's a moment where both sides blink out of sync because they no longer share the same brain. And then he just sort of slides apart. And that, that horrible dire rat that was on his shoulder immediately turns and begins feeding on him. Oh, that's um, lovely. Just w- just... Without, e- without even the slightest pause. There's no remorse for its master whatsoever. Uh, fun fact, uh, black guards actually have companions like sorcerers. Uh, so uh, that was my, since I, I allowed that house rule for Merezi, I thought I might allow it for him as well. And uh, speaking of Merezi, that will bring it to you. Uh, there is still a, uh, you may now, may now make a fortitude saving throw to try and throw off the effects of this nausea. That is a 21. 21. So you uh, have, have finished emptying the contents of your breakfast and have successfully recovered. I think maybe I'm supposed to have you do that at the end of the round, but uh, I, I don't care. I'll go ahead and let you do that, and I will let you uh, I will let you have one attack this round as you're kind of recovering. Let me attack that stinky, stinky poo man. That is 12. He doesn't have great armor, but unfortunately 12 will not do it. His, his rubbery hide still manages to repel it, and his, his thrashing tentacles on the side are kind of pushing you away. I did not um, know he had thrashing tentacles. Well, the, the original, the Otiag, uh, does have tentacles. Uh, this one is, again, semi-human, uh, but he still has tentacles as well, because he's a horrifying poop monster. <laughs> uh, but that will bring it to Penton. All right. How, how bad a shape is this thing looking? He looks he looks in rough shape. He okay. looks in bad shape. Uh, I'm going to take the easy way out and throw another set of uh, magic missiles at him. Okay. I feel like I want to stay away from this guy. <laughs> Keep my distance. Uh, be 11 points. 11 points. Uh, that really, really injures him as you burn those sizzling in. He is, he's still hanging on. Uh, uh, unfortunately, because it's his turn next, and he uh, screams at you, and he says, I'm just trying to bring you affordable food that's easy for the whole family to prepare! (laughs) Um, And he uh, thrashes out with his tentacles, one of them at you, Penton, and one of them at you, Merezi. Okay. Uh, And let's go with Merezi first. That is a five. Ha. And a two. Uh, also, well, also he even if he had hit, there's a fifty percent chance he would miss because he's blinded because of ticks. Anyway, uh, that will actually bring it back to aforementioned ticks. Yes. Well, I wish I had some flaming spells because I really don't want to touch this guy. But unfortunately, I and Destiny Seeker are going to have to get ourselves dirty, and so I'm going to run up. And swing for the bleachers. That is a 15. A 15 will hit. Okay. And so that is 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. Uh, so that is that is 57 points of damage that y'all have done. He is uh, screaming at you as his, as his tentacles just flail. And you're, you're just trying to bat them out of the way with uh, Destiny Seeker. He, he's, he's yelling at you that, you know, I can offer you 38 weekly choices of customizable Mitch and Match meals. <laughs> um, and that's uh, when it will be a Thora's turn. I have to know, is this service called Poop Apron or Hello Trash? <laughs> uh, I I prefer Poop Apron, personally. Yeah, works for me. All right, I'm going to attack the poop monster with a two-handed sword. Yay. Okay. <laughs> That's a 15. A 15? Yes. Okay. Uh, that will hit, because that was the same as before. Okay. 16 points of damage. So, uh, once again, Thora... <laughs> Uh, describe to me how you dispatch this humanoid poop monster. Um, uh, I go in to stab it and slash it. 
and it kind of just disintegrates into the floor after I stab it screaming about what it just screaming and it just disintegrates <laughs> it's just it's screaming and screaming at you that order now for 50 percent off use code <laughs> hashtag chafe yes chafing for your first month free and then it fades <laughs> away you're right <laughs> <laughs> there is a uh, a tapestry above of an older god, but I, I won't even have y'all roll for it. It's just a, it's it's a horrifying monster of uh, monstrous god of rot and decay uh, that they are doing, and uh, you are all in just you all really would like to leave this place. This is, I've this heard is... of a horrifying god of rot and decay. All right, I'm going to try and search the room right quick before we leave and see if there's anything valuable that isn't too disgusting. Uh, you do find um, ten gold um, on <laughs> the uh, the dark paladin, uh, along with a five platinum is on him. His uh, armor would have been valuable if it had not been sliced in half. <laughs> uh, his his sword is is valuable, but it's not it's not does not appear to be magical. So it would be a, a big pain to carry a big two handed sword. Uh, and honestly, everything else in this room is just disgusting and horrible, and you just want to burn it all. Uh, that's what I was planning on. Let's burn it, burn it thoroughly, clean the space in the name of Garl Glitter Gold. I like uh, fire! Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and Norfear, uh, comes up to you, Athora, and he goes, Wow, uh, uh, I really appreciate you coming back for me. Of course. We are partners, are we not? <laughs> we are indeed, and, uh... To be perfectly honest, while I did want to use uh, magic escape uh, for you to escape, I really didn't know if it would work or not, or if you would die, or if you would come out on the moon, but I figured it would be better than certain death. Yes, thank you. I think <laughs> I think I've got three more in here if you ever need one. Uh, and he turns to all of you. Uh, really sorry about the, uh, the hairy guy. I hope he's okay. He always managed to land on his feet, possibly in two pieces, but on his feet. <laughs> ah, well... I am sure that he will. Uh can we uh can we please get out of here now? Let's Sounds go. like a grand yeah, let, idea. Let's leave. Uh obviously there's the uh corridor leading back to the barracks uh where Casper was. Uh but behind you, uh behind the uh cooking area, there's an area that leads uh deeper into the Simeon crevasse uh fortress uh that goes uh, in uh, leading slightly downwards with a slight stare. Would this be where the people were, who Athora was chasing be? Norfear says, uh, well, they, they seem to have gotten this far. Uh, some of them were already captured by Casper, but some of them, it seems like, made it past here. Either they snuck past or uh, they managed to run past. I don't know. But it, it, I, as far as I can tell, uh, we were still tracking them when we ran into this, you know, that so i i think there were at least you know four or five more who had made their way further down the hall all right athora why don't you lead us on and okay let's march on and bring them to justice so they can die <laughs> yes that, that is the plan uh so athora i would like you to make a uh spot check for me uh or if not you can just make a straight um wisdom roll oh yay with your wisdom modifier that's a 13. 13. Okay. Uh, so as you make your way down the tunnel, uh, I believe that as a tiefling, you do have uh, low light vision. Yeah. Or dark. Yes. You uh, come to a place where things seem not quite right. And there's a, um, there's a, a, a torch that's in a sconce. And there's just something odd about the light coming out from that torch. Oh. Pull it. Definitely pull it. <laughs> uh, I pull it. Okay. Uh, so what you do is you you reach your hand up, and what happens is your hand actually breaks the uh, hand, the light of the torch, and five spikes just come out in front of you. Oh, but, sorry. Uh, but as you were just reaching for it and hadn't actually stepped out, uh, you're perfectly fine. I mean, you, you, of course, you know, flinch your hand back, but you're fine. Hooray. And um, and stuck to uh, those spikes is one of the Kraxador bandits. You actually even recognize his face. Uh, not as well because it's impaled by a spike. And it, his, his head, his slowly um, uh, bleeding out head just kind of rolls towards you. But it is uh, very, very dead. 
Wow. Yay. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but all you needed was to get over a 12. So, hey. And then you still would have gotten to do a uh, reflex save. But anyway, uh, all good. So y'all continue to make your way forward. And uh, you're going deeper and deeper into the Simeon crevasse. And you find, you, you get a sense of space that even though you're in a corridor, the corridor is gently widening. And you can hear kind of like echoes and things coming from ahead. And you, you, you all know, you've all been in dungeons and, and underground places. You can get the feeling that, that the area ahead of you is very, very open. And you can hear kind of like that echoing sound that comes from a larger space. Uh, would anyone like to do anything before going forward? Some kind of spot checkity? <laughs> checkity spot? Uh, you certainly can do one. Try and uh, look, get a look-see. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, I see so everything. <laughs> as you as you make your way forward, you're just kind of like, you're thinking about those spikes and uh, wondering about stuff, and you kind of maybe take your halberd out and kind of like poke a little bit ahead of you, and your halberd hits something a little soft <laughs> in, the corner, in the corner, and you feel like a vibration of something moving. And then, of course, again, being a half-orc, you have low-light vision. Um... You look down, and you see that there is actually a um, sort of like a zombieish, you know, not skeleton, but not uh, normal uh, hand, and it is uh, wriggling underneath the the pole part of your halberd as you've trapped it under the halberd. Oh, terrible! I don't like that. I'd like to maybe kill it. Just okay. a hand by itself. Just a hand by itself. All righty. Does it um, have a... uh, go, just give me a straight uh, attack roll. Oh, yes, yes. Does it have a baleful Eleven. blue glow? Eleven. Uh, it, 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 as soon, you kind of like reverse your thing just to bring it down and just, you know, bisect it with your halberd, uh, but it actually just scutters out of the way and it scutters down further down the um, hall, uh, you know, the way you're going. Well, that happened. <laughs> Pinton, uh, could you make a um, reflex saving throw for me? I will do so. Uh, be a 12. Okay. Uh, a um, hand falls on your shoulder. Ah. Uh, it, 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 and it's uh, not attacking you, but it's kind of like, like sort of digging into you, but more like it doesn't know what you are, and it's just kind of like... Feeling me out. Yeah. Uh, Feeling you, you like up. I will brush it away. Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't really require a roll. You just kind of, whoop, like, knock it off. Uh, and um, because Tix, no. would you, <laughs> Tix, would you make a uh, spot check for me? Does it have a baleful blue glow at all? <laughs> it does not. Uh, it does not have a baleful blue glow. <laughs> My spot check uh, good, good is question. a one. I am preoccupied with Destiny Seeker and cleaning the filth off of them while we walk in the dark. And mm -hmm. uh, Destiny Seeker appreciates it. And so I see absolutely nothing. I sense absolutely nothing. I am off in my own little world. Okay. So you, um, this all kind of happens more or less nearly at the same time. Uh, uh, you step on a hand, uh, which you notice because it's wriggling under your foot. Uh, and you look down. And as you look down, uh, you, you sense something above. You look up and another one falls on your face. Terrible. And it's just kind of, and it's just kind of going, rah, 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 rah. kind of like with him. It's not really attacking you, but it's it's squeezing and kind of scratching at your face a little bit. Is it a human size hand or a gnome yes. size hand? So it is a human size hand, so, it, so it's covering most of it's your face. covering my entire head. Um, yes, yes, it's just like rah, 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 rah. you have a hand hat. So I I grab it off, throw it on the ground, and I swing Destiny Sticker to bisect it. Okay, give me that roll. Uh, that is an 18. 18, and you just, boom, just cut it clean in half. And it, well, as you've known before with uh, necromantic energy, when you destroy enough of the body, uh, or in this case the hand, uh, it just uh, immediately becomes inert. Uh, and the one that you stepped on uh, is, is kind of gotten off, and it's just scrambling down the hall, along with the one that uh, Pinson that you brushed off. All right. Um, I've had enough of this game. Uh, I'm going to kick on my Holy Radiance. Okay. So that uh, any other 
zombie hands get near me, they're just going to start to sizzle. Okay. Uh, you... <clears throat> Bring out your holy uh, Athora. You've never seen this before, so Penton, describe real quick what that looks like when you kick on your holy your aura. Well, the already beautiful Penton um, just bursts into what can only be described as a holy, embracing glow that just happens to burn the undead. Okay, it's mostly uh, glitter. <laughs> <laughs> mostly glitter. It's kind of a disco effect. Um, yeah, there's there's and little you, little beams of light that you know, kind of fling around in a circle, and uh, there's a strange song playing in the background. Tick smiles okay. and shoots the guns at him, and says, "That's my buddy." <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Don't uh, stop uh, believing. <laughs> uh, as you as you brighten your your light and and cast it, uh, y'all actually see several more hands that are. Uh, either clinging to the wall, clinging to the ceiling, uh, running about the the floor near you. None of them are really aggressive towards you. Uh, okay, who a- stole a watch from a witch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's an honest question. Um, but the 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 only really noteworthy thing is you see two of them are actually similar to the ones you saw when Athora first appeared out of the bag of holding. Is they are kind of bound to one another so one is walking on the ground Uh, and the other one the other one is holding something and it is actually holding a staff kill it a gun uh (laughs) it is not the not the staff uh the rod of seraphim just you know well yeah uh, because no (laughs) exactly uh it is not it is it is literally a staff uh it is about four feet long and uh they are just going down the hall with it <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> yep. uh, they're 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 completely ignoring you. Uh, they're just do, 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 going down. Uh, you can certainly kill it if you want. I mean, are these things being affected by the glow at all? I mean, are they classically undead? They do seem to uh, shy away from it. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the ones the ones that were like right near you when you started, they do sizzle and burn. Okay. And uh, and you know do like that little and shuttle away. Yeah, for for uh, for, for, for official sake, it, it does D four uh, damage per round. Okay, yeah. So I, I probably like one that was like right above you. Like it collapses, uh, it, it like loses its grip, and then it falls right near you, and then it burns up. Uh, mm-hmm. But all of the other ones, they just kind of keep their distance when they uh, get singed uh, as you're as you're walking through. Crispy fried. Mm-hmm. Uh, these things don't have a lot of hit points. Right. Um. You continue to make your way forward, and finally, the uh, area just kind of opens up, and there is in front of y'all a massive chamber. Uh, it is lit by moonlight, uh, so somewhere there is natural light coming in through, so uh, you don't know if like this just dipped into the valley or if there's a giant hole. You, don't, you can't tell from here. But uh, the room is probably close to 250 feet across, uh, you know, like at its diameter. Uh, It's roughly circular, but not perfectly circular. It has a few interesting features uh, in it. Oh, boy. Uh, The first thing is that it's just covered with uh, tattered tapestries. Just everywhere are these these tapestries. And there, there is like a breeze coming through here. Uh, that you don't know if that's from wherever the moonlight's coming from or if it's from, like... There are actually other openings uh, that, besides yours into this giant, like, central circular-ish chamber, but the, the tapestries are just, like, kind of gently waving. In the center of the room, you see a small dais, a raised area. Uh, I'm a dais, I'm a dais, I'm a dais. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just amazed you know that song. <laughs> uh, set into it is a black crystal. You're not sure what kind of black crystal. Behind that crystal is a uh, partially collapsed giant throne. I mean, a throne for a giant, if I may say. Um, and it is it is like crumbling. It's like falling apart. And that is the main things that you see when you come into this room. Okay. Um, do we hear anything going on around? Is it uh, smelly in here? 
with there that. is the smell of decay. It's nothing like the poop monster room, but there is the smell of decay uh, and rot. It is an unpleasant smell, but it's by no means unbearable. There's I, also the smell of very, very old things. I got a, I got a zero on my listen check. Okay, <laughs> uh, you can definitely hear uh, that there is uh, wind, <laughs> and that wind exists. Okay, I'm going to try uh, and do another spot check. Okay. One of my mini dice. And that is a 17. A 17? Yep. Okay. Uh, so you uh, take a, a few steps into the room and really get a good gauge. I, I'm not I'm not tripping you up by saying you walk into the room. I'm just saying that's required for doing yep. it. Yep. And uh, uh, take a good look around the room. A few things strike you. Uh, first of all, you realize that the throne is not really a throne. It appears to perhaps be a giant hand or claw hmm. or something like that. Uh, you see, like, uh, one of the things that you took to be, like, part of the spire of the side of the throne is actually, like, a bone sticking out of one of the fingertips. You also, as you look around, you realize that the tapestries, there are tapestries in here, but what you originally took for the rest of it being the tattered remains of those tapestries, they are hands. <laughs> Hundreds and thousands of hands all hanging from the ceiling and the wall like bats. And many, not all of them, but many of them are holding some kind of of staff or rod or stick and they are just gently waving in the breeze or gently moving from their own necromantic power oh and peaceful uh, yes it's very it, it is there's a there's a very quietness uh, stillness this is a room that you don't think many people have been in um Athora, i would like you to make a spot check oh great Okay. <laughs> that is, and that's using wisdom. Uh, uh, yes. Actually, no, it'll be a spot skill. Um, spot. Oh well, yes, if you, you have, have a modifier skill, for you your spot. That. If not, it's just straight wisdom. Okay, so that's a fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, so on one of the other corners, one of the far corners of the room, uh, you can actually see three of the remaining Craxador bandits. And they appear to be alive. They are completely bound by these hands. They are holding them by the ankles. They are holding them by the throat. Their hands are covering their mouths. And you can see them like gently struggling. Like, uh, but they cannot move. Okay. Uh, and they are, they are just like, like dozens and dozens of these hands are holding them down. I announce not to touch anything and I draw my sword. <laughs> Okay. Don't touch any of the uh, sticks. Both... Don't touch. <laughs> um, and at that very moment, something happens at the center dais. The black crystal, mm -hmm. a flash of energy comes out. It and Pinton, you feel a pulse of pure magic. Uh, this is not necessarily hostile, but it is very powerful. Just this mm -hmm. of magic. And just like any Star Wars movie, a figure appears above <laughs> the crystal. Uh, it is it, just a, 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 a ghostly figure appears above the crystal. He's just floating up there. He uh, turns and looks at all of you. He has the feel of like a wizard, but not not the classic wizard with the long beard and the robes. He's actually kind of dressed in like, kind of snazzy like a, he's got like a doublet and he's got rings on his finger and he he kind of looks like he's like in his mid 50s he's got a graying beard he's going like, through his he, midlife crisis dating exactly. younger women exactly making a whole bunch of hands <laughs> uh -huh. so he i mean he looks like someone who's very competent but also enjoys the good things in life and he turns and he sees you all he turns and he looks at all of you and he opens his mouth to talk and uh nothing comes out and he's just like 
you know, nothing, nothing's coming out. He kind of, he squints his eyes a little bit and he, he pull, holds up a finger and he reaches down, even though you can't see what he's, you know, there's nothing for you to see. And he kind of jiggles and then, and then suddenly comes in and he goes, I'm sorry, my, um, my levels were off. <laughs> and he says, um, hi, uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I believe, uh, are Penton, right? Yes. <laughs> good, good. Uh, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, big fan. Uh, and uh, you are Tix, correct, sir? I am, sir. And who do we have the pleasure of talking to? Well, uh, to that, and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to. I just want to make sure I've got everything correct. Uh, uh, you are, of course, Marezzi, young lady. Only to my friends. Ah, well, then I'll call you uh, Ezzy, then? Sure. Uh, okay, Ezzy. And uh, last but not least, we've got uh, uh, Al- 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 Thora. Is that Athora. right? Athora. Athora. Yes, I, I keep I keep uh, getting it wrong in my transcriptions. And uh, there's supposed to be someone else. Are we, are we missing someone? Yeah, he got hold. Huh. Um, yeah, Osakai was accidentally transported to we're not sure where. He's probably fine. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's probably fine. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I, I love the rivalry between you two. It is very, very uh, enjoyable. I'm sorry, I, I you, you asked who I am. Uh, first of all, I do want to let you know you are all in terrible danger. Uh, I'm going to try to help you if I can. Uh, I'm. It's actually my job to try and lend a hand if I can. Huh. Rimshot. Huh. My name. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Bixby. And that's where we'll end! Chafing Armor! <laughs> episode 81. Uh, thank you all for playing tonight. Thank you for not killing thank us yet. Thank you. I gotta hand it to you. You did another great job. Oh, but I'm bum Hey! Uh, so if I'm able to find it, I've got a wonderful another song from Fugly. I will uh, share that here at the end about... Uh, about too many dice, and um, we'll we'll uh, hope y'all enjoy that, and I'll make sure and link up uh, to where you can get more music from our our resident bard. Uh, but uh, again, thank you all for list, uh playing, and and uh, and uh, Riley, thank you for being our special guest player. Of course, I enjoy it. You're a queen. Excellent. Yes, she is indeed. Just, just princess. And we will uh, be back with a, a, a perhaps the stunning conclusion of this uh, little arc. Uh, in next one and uh, so take care everybody good night night. everyone sweet dreams and we will roll with you soon